uh, in Philadelphia, they used to be members of the San Francisco Labor Council. Then the San Francisco Labor Council took a position for a fair trial for Mumia Abu Jamal and the, the uh, POA resigned in uh, a huff. And they haven't been back. <laughs> but they still try to influence the council. For instance, the council took a position to support the San Francisco Eight. Do you remember the San Francisco Eight? They were former Black Panthers that were accused of some ridiculous charge that happened 15 years ago, which they dredged up in an attempt to revive the revive the persecution that been taking place since the Panthers first arrived. And uh, so the San Francisco Labor Council heard from um, uh, Richard Brown, who's a member of the San Francisco Aid and a former uh, Panther, and they, they heard from him, and the people got up and said, oh, I know this guy. We work together to get jobs uh, in, in my neighborhood. So in other words, uh, people there instantly bonded with him, and they passed out almost unanimously a motion to support the San Francisco Eight. So the POA, the Police Officers Association, went to the leadership of the council and said, we can't have this. We can't have the, the San Francisco Labor Council. We want you to rescind this. And the leadership of the Labor Council said, yes, we are going to ask the council to rescind this motion. So the next meeting was packed with people. There were a lot of people we hadn't seen delegates and we hadn't seen in years, you know. Some of them, some of them, we've never seen them at all. But they came out and was, the meeting was packed and I said, oh my God, I don't know if we're going to win this. And then more people started coming in. Of course, we organized a little bit. We called a few people. Anyway, so it was a tremendous debate, but they were on the defensive. The police and their supporters were on the defensive. They had a weak moral position, and so we were able to prevail, and it was not rescinded, and they put it back on the website, the support for the San Francisco. And they were free, except for unfortunately... And of course they won their, they won their freedom, the ones who were still alive. At least six now, uh, and that was a very, and they credited the San Francisco Labor Council uh, uh, as turning the tide in their favor. There was one other time, it was, you remember the case of Alan Bluford, who was killed by a police officer, and, and uh, his father, Adam Bluford, came to the council, spoke with the Justice Committee, and also spoke to the council, and again people said, this man has lost a son unnecessarily. This was, a, this was a travesty of justice. We have to support him. And so the council voted for him. Again, the police officers association said, we can't have this because the resolution that was passed by the council called for the, for Masso, the assassin of Alan Bluford, to be tried for murder. Now, there is no place in this country where a labor council or any other organization that I know of and, and of, of its type uh, to call for the, a police officer to be tried for murder. So this was a groundbreaking thing. So again, they said, we're going to rescind this. And wouldn't you know it, we overturned it. We overturned the rescind. And so they put it back on the website. They had taken it down on the website. Now, I guess it, it's shameful that the leadership of the council went along with trying to do this. That's a, a, a shameful thing. But the members of the council, the delegates, were able to push it back. So this tells me, this tells me that we have a lot of power if we will only assert ourselves with our sisters and brothers on the block. You know, we last night there was a meeting of the the. the the daughter of uh, Eric. Eric Garner, whose name is Erica Garner, uh, spoke at a meeting here in Oakland. <laughs> and they, they broke people up into little groups and went to our group. They said, well, what, what should be done? How to get the neighbors? How to get 
we should get our neighbors together to discuss this problem. And I said to myself, you know, I've never got my neighbors together. In my neighborhood where I live. And here I am saying we are getting people are getting the neighbors together. I hadn't even thought of it, you know. I mean, this is a city, big city, you don't even know a lot of your neighbors, right? So it's a struggle. It's not like if you're in small, a small little Mississippi town or something, everybody knows everybody. This is a big city, so it's a little bit different. But why shouldn't we bring our neighbors together? Go door to door and say, this is an important issue. We need to stop these killings. Anyway, I won't go on and on. So, thank you very much, sisters and brothers. Free movement! Oh! We gotta tear down the prison wall. Free movement! I lose your mind. We gotta tear down we got to free move me up, I move your mom. We got to tear down prison walls. Free move me up, I move your mom. We got to tear down prison walls. Free move me up, I move your mom. Okay, I have one last speaker. Um, and before I introduce him, I want to ask that um, people who have uh, the signs, please um, bring them back before you leave because we need them for tomorrow and for next demonstrations because we're going to we're gonna bring Mumia home and that's a promise, we're going to bring them home. So, so, so we, need those, we're, we need those signs to keep in the streets. So I'm going to introduce uh, Jeremy Miller from the Idris Selly Foundation and, and he's, he's going to um, say a few words and I think that will be our last speaker. I did want to mention that Guadalupe's sister happens to work, her, her oldest sister, remember I talked about the vigil Saturday night? So um, her, uh, her oldest sister happens to work around here, just happened to hear the demonstration and came by and heard her sister's name and she was really, really touched that we're talking about her.